I don't care which. But here we are, the first game. Let's get uh, to it. Marc Andre Ladasaur has shown up, guys. He's going to get a small little ticking off from the uh, producers, hey, but he's uh, What's up? Not as bad as uh, Byron Cavman <laughs> last week. GPL is back. Right, good luck to you, Busquet. Looks like we could be getting some chat from these guys. We will try to avoid talking when they are. All right. Mark is very good for those who um, don't know. He has a bunch of heads-up experience. He used to play a bunch of heads-up sit and goes. So, Ooh, something I did not know. Uh, I'm gonna have to get lucky. If I want to take this down. So, uh, Guo the other day had a statue of Buddha or something like that. Probably it was not Buddha. Do not be angry if it's I got it wrong. Olivier has perhaps Queen Victoria <laughs> as a statue. I mean, if I guess Queen Victoria for every statue we see on the GPL, I mean, could I be right once? Probably uh, not. No, probably not. This appears to be more of a Roman or a Greek statue. Yeah, I, I think so. Very uh, self-deprecating there from uh, Olivier, saying that he'll need to get lucky to uh, beat Marc-Andre. Well, I mean, in theory, if you're supposed to win like 52% of the time, it's kind of lucky to get 66% of them, isn't it? I guess. Although someone has to win, and on average it's going to be the guy who has 51% win rate or 52% win rate. Knowing, though, that Marc-Andre has a lot of heads-up experience at games that Olivier is aware of, so it's not like he's just playing $50 games or $100 games, he's playing the $1,000 games or whatnot. That means he's obviously pretty good. Or he's filthy rich and has a lot of money, because you can't survive too long in those games if you are constantly losing. So here we see the players checking down with the ace highs. Let's see if Marc-Andre goes for a little bet, and he does. A spot where both players think ace high is good. The way the action's gone. There's a man on the floor. One player to each hand, sir. <laughs> oh, who is that? that looks... It was Queen Victoria, I think. <laughs> Queen, Queen Victoria reincarnated <laughs> as an <a, as> <laughs> unshaven poker player. <laughs> um, I don't know what the point of that is. But... Olivia commenting about Mark's bet yes, on the turn. Production. Who knows? Perhaps he thinks it's a little bit too thin. <clears throat> Top pair for Olivier here. Second pair for Marc Andre. There's a lot at stakes here today. The, hey. uh, the winner either keeps the first overall ranking or or takes it. Correct. Got uh, revenge to take against uh, Olivier here. This guy did defeat. Marc Andre in week five of the GPL, two one. This is not the flop Marc Andre is looking for. This would be a pretty snug turn fold, but Olivier is betting on the larger side. That may allow Marc Andre to get out of the way, but I, I mean, I would be pretty surprised if he folds. I think it's kind of a mandatory call. It's a clear check on the river. I was going to check most cards anyway, but this is pretty obvious. Hopefully he doesn't lead, because that would be pretty annoying. Yeah, okay, he picks up a nice pot there. It's a tough spot for Marc Andre to lead there as a bluff. He he did have not a very good hand that's unlikely to win at showdown, but at the same time, if he bets, it's just so easy for Olivier to have a random ace that decided to barrel off. But, you know, knowing Olivia, he may not be barreling too many aces there. Maybe he likes to play it a little bit more slowly. So maybe that is a spot where you should be leading, thinking that Olivia has a lot of marginal made hands that was that were, that were betting for value slash protection that you lose to on the river. I wonder if this is a hand I can go for value with. I think it might be. So some people may think this is a bit too thin, given there is a possible force trade on the board. But Livia can get called by a few worse hands, and it's somewhat unlikely he's against a better made hand. It's probably a good value bet. Well, he got called by worse, so 
Can't yep. be that bad. Let's see what he had there. Follow the GPL on Twitter, cool. guys. Mm. At GPL. Use the hashtag GPL to follow the conversation. Give us your thoughts. You can also download our app, GPL TV, available on iOS and Android. It can be used to access all the highlights of the GPL and the uh, upcoming fixtures, including the remaining five weeks of studio action and the playoffs in Las Vegas. You can also access the merchandise store, which went live a few days ago. Check out the merchandise of your favorite GPL franchise. Hoodies, caps, and t-shirts, all available. There, Olivier went for a bluff on the river after getting to the river in a small pot. It's a pretty neat spot to go for a bluff. I got Mark off of a bad pair. So join the conversation in the Twitch chat, guys. We are on a 10-minute delay, but Jonathan and I will be monitoring the Twitch chat for the duration of the evening. Our mods will also be able to help you out if you have any questions regarding the format, any suggestions, or any form of feedback. We're always welcome. So here Olivier is going for a bet with this middle pair. There are a lot of worse hands that can call, like ace high, some king highs, stuff like 7-6. So very nice spot to go for value. You'll see sometimes the players are going for value with medium pair, and sometimes they're not, or middle pair. And it's important to realize that middle pair here is actually quite strong, whereas on other boards it is significantly weaker. So pay attention to that if you are trying to learn how to play No Limit Hold'em. Got a stack coming in from our uh, resident stack guru, Eric Denny. Olivier Busquets won seven of his nine GPL matches. That's as many wins as Las Vegas moneymakers in total, and one more than the Berlin Bears. Wow. We are horrible. The Las Vegas moneymakers I'm referring to. <laughs> Shout out, Eric Denny. Looking to get him back in your ear holes from tomorrow, or from next week even. He's suffering from some internet issues at the uh, Las Vegas studio. Hopefully have that up and running next week. I have a bad feeling this is not going to work. It's a bad feeling it's not going to work, but it probably will this time. Notice Mark here has the Ace of Diamonds, so Olivia can't be bluffing with a random Ace of Diamonds. Sweet. Hand. It's one of those spots where I just kind of have to bluff. Don't you guys think? <laughs> that is what I think. I mean, you have pretty much the bottom of your range there, and Queen High is sure not going to win at the river. It's a tough card to bluff, though, which is why Olivier probably was saying that he doesn't think it's going to work too often, because Mark andre is going to be very inclined to call with a lot of pairs there whenever the river... Well, any anytime any card pairs on the board, it's somewhat likely you can get called by any pair, or at least a lot of pairs. For a second, I thought Mark Andre was going to get crazy with the 8 3 offsuit. That would have been one of the first times we have seen anything crazy with the 8 3 offsuit, but nope. There's no reason to do that. Three big blinds. I think it's a pretty reasonable jam, especially when it makes it that much. So, this may appear to be a gigantic all in, but especially with hands like small pairs. Oh, we're shoving already here. <laughs> um, th these are hands that are reasonable to shove. Really 40 big blinds. <clears throat> I don't have that wide of a range there. Still so much in play. If Mark andre Minray is there, so far. Um, maybe Elevate is not jam. Second pair here for Mark andre Interesting check back by Olivier there. He probably does not want to be betting too much on this exact board just because it's very easy for Marc Andre to have something. Either a gut shot or a pair. And he's not going to let any of that go. If he leads here, I'm just going to fold. I have too many Queen X's and 9 X's, pocket 10's, pocket Jacks, even a bunch of Kings, weak Kings there. I just think the fourth pair is just not worth uh, 
trying to improve or hoping that he uh, gives up or here we'll call in the river so I'll just give up on the just fold the turn. Great fold there by Olivier. Whenever you improve on the turn, it's very tempting just to continue in the pot, but nothing really changed. I mean, he still had nearly nothing, and he's only beating bluffs slash. I could consider peeling here, bluffs. but the 10 is going to be a card he gives me credit for, and I feel like he might be barreling. This is good. It's an interesting concept of... He's over 40 bigs. Oh, it's not quite He's enough. really tough. He's not going to give this one easy. Mm. We're going to need uh, we're gonna need some cards at some point here. Whenever you're drawing to a hand, you want to be drawing to cards that your opponent really will give you. Too much with Mark. I, I really do think right. he's pretty good. So I'm just going to try to play solid, aggressive. Make him make tough calls. Top pair here for Mark Andre Ladisor. Turns Kings up. Notice Olivier has declined to not continuation bet quite a few times so far in this match, and that is what you have to do against good, aggressive, smart, tough opponents. You can't just blindly continuation bet every time or anywhere near every time. You have to be giving up sometimes. Bingo for Busquet on this slot. Tiny piece for Marc Andre. Going to continue here. Notice Levy does just call. It's obviously a spot I could check raise if I wanted to. Um, that's interesting. So only the Jack and the Queen beat me, and I don't know how likely those are. So Olivier going for thin value. But since I have the eight and the nine, there aren't a ton of clubs that he can call with, but there's some. All right, so. Quick fold by the king five there. That's perhaps an indication that maybe Marc Andre should consider three betting somewhat more often against Olivier. Assuming he's going to be folding out a lot, but of course, if he does start doing that, Olivier will adjust. We've seen a lot of players in the Global Poker League three betting stuff like eight six off suit and five three suited, and that's worked out very well for most of them because it seems like people are somewhat snug versus the three bet. Oh, he did bluff that hand. That's good. Nice hand there. This is a tough spot for Mark on this flop because he has a hand that's often good, but he can't really uh, stick around versus much more aggression. And this is a card Olivier is certainly going to continue barreling on. You'll notice that most of the best players in this league are often barreling or bet, betting the flop with their garbage when they have backdoor draws and they're giving up when they do not have backdoor draws. This is a spot where Olivier had a backdoor straight draw and flush draw on the flop, so he is betting and then betting again on the turn when he improves his equity. Putting Mark andre in a pretty tough spot here. Yeah, and this is just what I was saying. Whenever you call this hand on the flop, it's. It, I'm not saying the flop call is bad by any means. I think you just have to make the call, but it's never a great spot if your opponent puts any more money in the pot. It's tough because Olivier could very easily have well, any of the draws. There are a lot of draws available. But it's hard to do much about it. 
Especially with the um, stack gap that's uh, opened up between these two guys. There haven't really been any huge pots, apart from the, uh, the early hand. So some players may elect to check raise this flop in Olivier's shoes. I think he's probably going to call if Marc Andre bets. But maybe he applies pressure. No, he does just stick around and call. And this is something a lot of people are very uncomfortable with, just calling with 10 high out of position with a, a bad draw. But Olivier is going to be able to steal this on some rivers. Yeah, he actually leads the turn. Interesting. Him. We just made a strategy segment on exactly this play. We saw it yesterday, Anatoly Filatov did this exact same thing, where he led when the middle card paired. Hopefully you're watching that. I think this is actually a good up here. Nice call. I think a bluff would have worked there for Olivia elected to uh, pull the trigger. All the draws missed. That's the problem, is all the draws missed. When all the draws miss, I think you probably have to be somewhat inclined to give up. If some of the draws came in, well, we notice there are a lot of the draws actually give Olivier a pair. But if some of the draws came in, I, I think Olivier would have been very inclined to go for it. But the queen is effectively a blank. It doesn't may not appear to be a blank, but it is effectively a blank. So I don't think you need to be going for it on that card too often. Hmm. As you've been following the broadcast this week, we'll know that Jonathan is... This is a bet here on this board. Oh. Flush for Busquet. No, I have a pretty good hand. Let's see how aggressive Marc-Andre wants to play this. If Marc-Andre does bet, I think Olivier is just going to call, because if he raises... Mark Andre is going to fold out a lot of his bluffs, and I think you really want to keep your opponent in. Um, that could be a problem. <laughs> Notice no raise there. Oh, wow. So this is actually an interesting card, because now Olivier loses to the 10 and the 5 and the King of Hearts. That's a crazy board now. So we went from having the second nuts to... Whatever it is, the fourth nuts or something yeah, like that. Yeah, cannot be a good card for me, especially. Can Mark Andre pull the trigger? Well, from Mark Andre's point of view now, yeah. now Olivier is just really never folding. Hard to bluff on that. He's never on folding the ten and the five. It doesn't really make sense that he What's would have the five got the ten. A heart all the time, but now with the eight of heart, it completes a straight flush for two of his calling hands. So he's saying that some of the, the five and the ten of hearts no, may not. fold on the river if it straight flush does not come. But then they're never folding, so it makes bluffing much more difficult. This could be trouble for Marc Andre, but it looks like he's not going to lose a huge pot here. Which is always fortunate for him. <laughs> yeah. I would be pretty surprised if Olivier bet huge, and he does not bet huge here. It's pretty tough for Marc Andre to have anything great. So, if you bet very this big, is not fun. Well, he I'm may not start sure folding. I'm... He's got a seven so often here. Mm. Good analysis there by Marc Andre. Not electing to check raise the turn or anything overly ridiculous. And you know, he lost the pot there and he's down to only 12 or 13 big blinds, but he's not out. This is a trap. Calling if you jammed. 
Mark Andre slips below the uh, 10 big blind mark here. <sighs> Said a little while ago he needs to find a hand. Hasn't quite gone his way in this match so 10 far. 10 big blinds. Honestly, if you're going to be playing heads up, you should really just memorize the ranges at, at the minimum at 10 big blinds and below. What you're calling with, what you're going all in with. Um, and then start to add in some limps and build a strategy from there. But you should you should have an idea that you can jam this for 11 big blinds, you know? You have to study away from the table if you want to be great. You can't just show up and play. If you show up and play, maybe you'll win sometimes, but you're not going to do as well as if you study the game a ton away from the table. Yeah, we saw last night perhaps the importance of the um, push-shove ranges in the... Uh, Wei Zhang against um, Timothy Don't Adams. trapping with a hand game. like this. Just doesn't play well or that well in a limped 10 big blind pot. Because uh, he's just not dominating that many of his hands. Follow the GPL on Twitter, guys. At GPL. And uh, use the hashtag GPL to uh, join the conversation. You may encounter a few tweets uh, pertaining to the Ghanaian Premier League. But don't be alarmed. Plenty of uh, GPL discussion there too. Any questions for myself or Jonathan Little? Tag us cool. at Jonathan Little at Lord underscore Booth. <coughs> Download the application available at the uh, iOS and Android stores. Keep on up to date with the GPL on the go. Fold. Watch highlights. You can check all the standings yeah, for every player. Word. Check match histories for every really hard game. Have much, but he can. Notice there the limp bet by Olivier. That's a play you see a lot of the players making whenever they do elect to limp with well, their whole range. They're limp men betting very frequently, and it picks up the pot a large portion of the time. It's hard to defend that after, out of position with a marginal holding. Notice Marc Andre <sighs> is getting effectively blinded off and put in a miserable spot. Now he just has to win a bunch of hands. But Olivier knows, knows it's possible. He won a World Poker Tour one time with a 20 to 1 chip disadvantage. So here we're only at a tiny 7 or 6 to 1 disadvantage. So Marc Andre is well within it. This is probably close to a call, but still just going to be a fold. For something like 9 8 suited, you probably have to throw it in there for the 6 or 7 big blinds. This is a call. Notice there. It just said nine, what did I say, eight, eight, nine, seven? Or nine, eight. Eight, so nine eight, suited. Eight, eight nine said. suited. Olivier saying the ten, nine suited is a call. So we're at least in the same ballpark. This is going to do it, unfortunately. So Marc Andre knows what he's All doing. All in the behind. He makes the call. Not much there for uh, Marc Andre. <laughs> Queen on the turn turns things around for the time being. That'll do it. Mark Andre right. gets the double up. The, uh, it's good turn card. The Dharma on the alive. turn. And uh, yeah, he's back up to uh, 19,000, but still absolutely not out of the woods. Olivia Busque is still in the driving seat in this one, as he always seems to be here on the GPL. Notice that Olivia likes to limp this instead of open shove. A lot of players do start to have a limping strategy when they get above eight or so big blinds. And the reason for that is if he open shoves this, it's going to be you know, maybe a tiny bit profitable or something like that, but you're not loving it. Whereas if you limp, you get to see a flop a lot of the time. And when you don't get to see a flop, it's usually because your opponent just has a better hand than you. And it's fine to fold when you don't have the best hand. I wrote a... Uh, chips will be going in here. And Olivier will get it in again with the best hand. Safe for Olivier. Still safe. Just an ace for Marc Andre Ladisor. Or Olivier will be taking a 1 0 lead in this first the game. America's six max. Nice, sir. Nice match. <sighs> nice one, Olivier. That was a pretty rough spot for Marc Andre. Once he got short, he just was in the shove fold game and. 
Whenever you're playing against a great player, they will often find themselves with 60% or 70% of the chips when you do get to that short set game. And Mark andre had to win two or three hands in a row. He got the first one, but could not get the second one. And that, and that's what he actually needed to win three or four hands in a row because he did get so short. Yeah, it wasn't a game where you felt that Mark andre did um, anything wrong in particular. Uh, we just saw Olivier um, kind of grinding away, uh, sort of, you know, making stabs at various pots. He, he mentioned that he would need to get a hand or two to uh, win the game, and he never really picked anything up. Um, in the end, he just got it in a couple of times, um, you know, just with a slightly um, inferior hand. Um, I mean, we, we just mentioned the fact that we're going to see uh, on the next break in between the six matches a, um, a kind of strategy segment with uh, you. And one of the things that we're going to pick up on is uh, firing the turn when the uh, board pairs. And there was an example of that in that um, game uh, when Olivier with the 8-10 flopped a gut shot and then led into uh, Marc-Andre. Um, tell us a bit more about that, what, what we might see in the, um, in the break and how, that hands, how this strategy is, is becoming relevant in heads-up poker. Well, it's not necessarily heads-up poker, it's just poker in general. So what happens is someone raises from middle or late position or on the button heads-up. You defend in the big blind with whatever you have. The flop comes... You check, they have continuation bet, you call, like Olivia did with his gut shot. Now, if the turn or the river, or if the turn pairs the middle or the bottom card, that's often a very good card for the person who is out of position calling, because most people in position, especially in heads up poker, are going to be checking behind with middle and bottom pair on the flop, because if they bet and get called, they're usually not in great shape. And as you've seen in this game and many of the other previous games here on the Global Poker League, a lot of players are checking those middle and bottom pairs very routinely. Sometimes they bet, but a lot of times they do check. So when they do bet and you call, that takes a lot of those middle and bottom pairs out of their range. So now when that comes on the turn, you could have a lot of those middle and bottom pairs because pretty much everyone's check calling with middle and bottom pair from out of position. So that, that allows you to lead as a bluff, and it will allow you to pick up a lot of pots. It didn't work out that time for Olivia, I don't think, but on average, that's going to be a play that should turn a nice profit. And... The best players are leading there with their, when they actually have the trips, and they're also leading with their bluffs. But it's a spot where you have what's referred to as a range advantage. And with a range advantage, you can often bet and pick up the pot a lot of the time. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, a pretty um, unfortunate start there for Mark andre He's um, 0 for 2 in heads-up matches in the GPL, um, losing to, well, previously losing to um, Olivier Bousquet. And I think also lost to... Um, Oh, no, he beat Igor Yaroshevsky in the cube. So he's 1-0. One, one oh. Apologies. Uh, one we're going to get to the 1-1. Uh, um, we're going to get to the second match uh, pretty shortly. Um, anything you'd like to see uh, Marc-Andre do differently this time around against... Uh, isn't it interesting they both kind of alluded to the fact that they would need to get lucky to beat the other? F felt like Olivier did have the upper hand there. Um, probably card distribution played a key. Would you like to see uh, um, Marc-Andre do anything differently? I don't really think he did much wrong that match. I mean, he made the one fold where Olivier bluffed on the river, but that was just a fine fold. He didn't have anything great. It's not like he folded a monster hand. Um, it's just hard to play against Olivier is what it amounts to. He doesn't lose big pots very often. He'll lose small and medium pots, but if you watch a lot of his games, he's not running a ton of huge bluffs, and he's doing a lot of, I guess, what people would call pot control, but it's not actually pot control. It's just good standard poker, and it's hard to play whenever someone does that. It's well, these guys, these guys are in a pretty um, nice position. The uh, the uh, pressure is off for these guys. They sit one and two in the conference. So these guys, you know, as you can imagine, look pretty relaxed here. I don't think either of them are going to be um, sweating this one too hard. But obviously, there's a lot of uh, bragging rights here in the GPL. And Olivier is trying to, um, you know, get that sweep that will um, take him to the top of the point scorer's table uh, ahead of uh, Fedor Holtz and Anatoly Filatov. And the guys are ready for the second of these three matches tonight. Off to the arena we go. I would venture to say that Olivier is actually, Olivier is actually right, playing for back. a lot because he wants to be the number one guy. Yeah. This is his format. So I he wants to be clearly the ran better than Mark in that first game, which continues my GPL um, experience. It's pretty nice. <laughs> Not to mention I bases now. <laughs> Talks about running good. Like, oh, I bases. Well, but let's put a queen on the flop and let's <laughs> end this game. No, so Olivier realizes he just had the better cards in that match. You know, and like I said, Marc Andre did not like if he did something wrong, it was very minimal. And I like I don't I didn't pick up very much at all. Shout out to S Worthers in the Twitch chat. Also cheap trick records. Keep your chat coming in on the Twitch folks. Any suggestions or questions to the commentary team? We'll be delighted to take those. 
Any questions for Jonathan Little? As you probably gathered, he's more than willing to uh, share his thoughts on the game of poker. Well, now I know. Well, that's why I'm here. I discovered today, Jonathan not only has a book, he has an app, a Twitch stream, a blog, a webinar. Was there one <laughs> other thing? I mean, this guy puts out a lot of good um, content, guys, and uh, we thank him for that. I actually have a lot of books, and Olivier Bousquet wrote the Heads Up chapter in my most recent book called Excelling at No Limit Hold'em. I'm actually doing a webinar with Olivier Bousquet going over his six-handed global poker league game to tomorrow night. Jersey. Well, there Which you go, right. folks. I tell people, people are like, John Lil. Hey, give me this weird look, you know? I guess they have this negative association with New Jersey, but I gotta tell you, where I live, I love it. I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm super excited. I used to think New Jersey was no good until I went over there a time or two, and it's just a nice place. I'm sure there are some bad parts of New Jersey, it's just like there are bad parts of everywhere, but there are some really sweet parts of New Jersey. I feel like New Jersey gets mocked a lot in uh, like popular culture. I mean, I've no experience of, of New Jersey, but I feel like in, in shows that I've watched, it's, it's seen as like the, uh, the kind of much poorer sibling of uh, New York. Close, nine, five, oh. So Olivia but, actually used to live around the corner from me. I live in Manhattan. He used to live there, and uh, he, li he moved to New Jersey now. And I think a lot of people in Manhattan, New York City in general, view New Jersey as like a lesser New Jersey, a, le a lesser New yeah, York. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the impression I've, I've garnered, but only from watching things like Friends. Yeah. I'm, I'm not uh, basing it on, a, on any sort of solid uh, evidence. Yeah, New Jersey is just sweet. I mean, most places are sweet if you live in the right pl place in specific spots. Everyone watches the Jersey Shore on MTV, and, and you don't want to go there. <laughs> what about uh, Atlantic City? That's okay, if you go to Borgata. <laughs> Not, not a great place just to uh, chill then. Hmm. Not the best run around. Notice here Olivier is just letting him play a small pot with this middle pair. Uh, Mark Andre making a good bluff on the river, but it is not going to work. Olivier recognizing his hand is just too high up in his range to fold. Big up Natalie Storm in the Twitch chat. Someone on stars, getting behind the uh, French dog. A lot of love for French dog in the chat. Seems like anytime Canada does anything, the Canadians come out to support them. <laughs> People like Canada. There's a lot of pride in Canada. Oh yeah, I mean, wait, wait till uh, Eric Denis comes to town. Oh wow. We'll have a million viewers here. Oh, I mean, just the Canada gets a, you know, a real um, kind of, <laughs> I mean, I don't even know what the, the word I'm looking for. They get excited. Yeah, they Canada get, gets put on show when Eric Denis in the house. This is seven six offsuit is a hand Mark Andre could conceivably three bet if he was trying to get a little bit out of line. Guys appreciate how fast we're playing because we are playing fast, both of us. This is a big three bet. There he does the three bet as I suggest. Interesting. And this could spell disaster already. I wonder. Well, I mean Olivia is gonna have a hard time folding this unless it runs out really bad, with. You know, an additional two clubs or an ace or a king or a queen. He's sure not going to pull now. <laughs> Man. Man, am I running? How does Mark andre feel about this card? Oh, well, he can't like it, but I, I think this is a reasonable hand. Well, so let's think about this. Should he check the turn and then bet the river? The problem is he doesn't want to check fold this. This hand has a decent amount of equity. So I don't know what the right play is. I mean, he has seven highs, so I don't think wow. betting can ever be that bad. Olivia is probably thinking that Mark <clears throat> should check a lot of I'm big so pairs. I'm not expecting him to bet again. Right. It's hard to have a value hand betting I again. I guess he has some sort of draw. That's going to be my guess, but like, do I just give him a free card at the draw? Do I raise here? This is tricky. Yeah, you don't expect to get bet into very know. often. Wow. Yeah, Bingo. He doesn't Four, have 6-7. <laughs> Should be good river for us, right? That would not be good. What an amazing hand. 
Hopefully he just is like 9-10 suited or 8-10 suited. I mean, I don't know. I really wasn't expecting him to bet there. But I mean, I can't fold here. I don't like this very much, I gotta tell you. Tanking a little bit as if we had a decision. Well, we kind of do. We could actually check here. Kind of felt like I should have raised the turn. I don't... Oh no, this is not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew he had set six. Man, that's just it's like a big one. <laughs> that sucks. Olivier sums it up. Oh no, this is not good. <laughs> <laughs> but then he snap calls because you that pretty much sucks. have to snap call there because all the other draws miss. The thing is, I'm pretty sure he was going to give up if he didn't hit. That's what's, like, especially annoying about that. Because, like, I just, I don't think that turn bet is good. Um, whatever. It doesn't matter. There's all in here. Picks up a seven. Up and down for Mark andre Jack, six, eight, nine. Let's take it down. Pull back, two, one. Bricks off. Okay, we'll uh, have life. Double up to ten big blinds. It's always good to have a little bit of life. I have life. What do I have? Eleven. Twelve big blinds. So in the previous game, Mark Andre got short. Well, we're gonna see. Chip's gonna go in here, guys. Fun lit by Olivier. He's doing this to hopefully get Mark Andre to shove. Snap. Mark Andre will need a king here to end this uh, heads up match. Okay. Or a jack. I mean a 10. One more. Earlier, Olivier mentioned that he did not want to limp ace queen for a 10 big blind stack because he's not dominating very much. But here, he likes to limp the queens because he actually is dominating almost everything. So. When you are developing a limping strategy, you want to be limping with hands that dominate random Lost Olivier there for a sec. So Bordeaux, he's going to be likely checking back a lot. We haven't lost him from the hand. He's going to be... Okay. Check raise here. Oh, no, raise. We're going to go in. Can't afford to double him up again, but this is our, uh, this is our shot. Wow. Tough spot for Marc Andre. I don't like that lead much, but. Hmm. Notice what happened to that hand is Marc Andre led in the limp pot into Olivier because if he checks and Olivier checks behind, Olivier is going to get have life again. a pretty good amount of equity. <clears throat> with, or he's going he's to check behind and see the turn a lot of the time with all sorts of stuff that has equity versus that top pair. So leading has merit, but in general, From you probably just want to check right. big blind, just like that. Alright, so where are we at? We are under 40 big blinds. Notes Olivier not betting here with just a bad backdoor straight draw. Yeah. 
Interesting that you mentioned uh, Olivier's comeback um, in the WPT at the uh, top of the show. Well, so here it was 2,000 to, what, 98? Or how many? Yeah, 2,000 to 98,000 that we were looking at here. Keeps <laughs> down below 3K. Yeah. Pretty epic comeback so far. This is not going to be the hand to do it on. And notice Olivier just not playing a big pot again with this marginal made hand. And now Olivier is going to get off the hook. Okay. So I think this is a pretty straightforward fold. Yeah, I was beat anyway. I was, I was afraid of that. Middle pair here for Olivier. Should give me another check. Uh, I don't like that card. All right, check. All right, so. How frustrating is it, Jonathan, when you have a player down to uh, a microscopic stack <laughs> and then he uh, worms his way back? Well, one time I've lost a sit and go a long time ago where I had 15, or I had uh, 985 chips. I'm sorry, nine. How much did I have? I had 9,985 chips. My opponent had 15. Um, that was pretty annoying. Luckily, it was only a $200 buy in sit and go. But that's the biggest comeback that's ever happened to me. I don't even know how to do the math on how big of a comeback that is, but it was an, an amazing one. But here, it's, it's frustrating, especially in the Global Poker League, when you're playing for country pride, for your team. I guess it's especially frustrating against someone like Olivia, who, who's you know tough enough to get down to uh, you know three or four big blinds anyway. Yeah, and when you finally get it, <laughs> he comes back, and you're like, oh, this is impossible. Can't win. Yeah, you're almost thinking about game three when you got him down that low. Well, yeah, you think the game's over. It's pretty hard to even get back up to ten thousand chips from two thousand or three thousand. Interesting spot here. Top pair for Olivier. I'm interested to see if Olivier likes to check raise this one or check call. Wow, that are, there is the card that may put the nail in the coffin. There's some fun runouts in this uh, game so far. <coughs> Anyone's experiencing any technical difficulties? Please bear with us. Some issues have been occurring with the uh, Twitch servers this week. Sometimes the internet just does not work. Despite your best efforts, wow, is Olivier going to find a way to fold this on the river? This is a bad run out for him. I mean, I would be shocked if he folded. But I've seen Olivier make some pretty sweet folds. I don't know how to make sweet folds. But he calls off. Okay, okay. he can let it. <laughs> I would not have folded there. Oh, there's one. Got lucky there. Notice in that game, Mark Andre. Game three effectively set up Olivier twice with some pretty nasty spots where he made straights t two times versus Olivier's trips and two pair. When that happens, you're just going to lose, but it took him twice, all right? Yeah. Normally, you don't get that to happen too often, but here it is. We have it, and well, Olivier is down. We're, we're tied up 1-1, so Olivier will not become the winningest player in the Global Poker League this week. May have to wait until next week, but he'll still be right there at the top of the leaderboard. And, you know, this is like what, like I said, it's fine for both teams to just get three points. So now the week is not a disaster, or at least the heads up portion is not a disaster for either team.
Yeah, I, th I think Marc Andre. I mean, he, he, you could see him frustrated at the um, kind of card distribution he was getting in that first game. I can have no complaints uh, whatsoever about that second game. Um, really rough spot for Olivier with um, trip tens and the rivered straight um, by uh, Marc Andre, and then the top pair against the turn straight, um, uh, t which also gave um, Marc Andre, which gave Olivier two pair. Yeah, a couple of rough spots there for Olivier, which he couldn't really do anything about. Yeah, I mean, every once in a while, I'll get an email from someone sending me in a hand question where they ask, could I have folded, then just insert the nut hand or the second nut hand. Like Olivier had the trips and he had the straight uh, two pair there. A lot of amateurs will be doubting themselves in that spot, but you just have to realize that you have one of the best hands you could possibly have, and your opponent could easily be bluffing or even overvaluing a worse hand. I think the trips hand, Olivier, he's just never folding there. The two pair that he busted on, the Ace of Hearts really is one of the worst cards in the deck for him because Ace 10 gets there, Ace 9 gets there, Ace 8 gets there. Um, you know, a lot of two pair, better two pairs come in, and also the backdoor flush came in. So that's a spot where that call on the river was much lighter than the initial call where he had trips. But even then, he's not folding two pair because two pair is very near the top of his range. Oh, yeah, there you go, folks. We're just going to wait for the um, second, uh, the final game to uh, commence in this first um, heads-up match in the Americas Conference. Got two more really exciting games for you the rest of this evening. Uh, we've got Byron Kaverman of the Sao Paulo Mets against uh, Tom Marchese of the New York Rounders. That's the third versus fourth in this conference. And then finally, we've got the, uh, the Battle of the uh, Basement Boys, uh, the, <laughs> Sa <laughs> the uh, San Francisco Rush against... The Las Vegas Moneymakers. Um, stay tuned for all those games. Anyone who's been experiencing any technical difficulties, please bear with us. Uh, we've been having a few small issues with the uh, Twitch servers uh, this week, but uh, bear with us and we will be back on your screens uh, shortly. Um, just a word on the app. The GPL TV app, which is available on iOS and Android, is a really, really great place to catch up with any GPL match that's happened uh, from the inception of the league all those months ago to the present day and beyond. And We've uh, got you know, if there are problems with Twitch whenever you're watching, all of those replays are available on the app, which is yeah. important. I think a lot of people may think that if it's maybe not working on Twitch, it doesn't work in the replay, but it works in the replays. Where The replays are not what is recorded on Twitch. They're what is actually recorded here in studio where we don't have to rely on the internet so much. Yeah, and also, guys, the, um, the, the Global Poker League YouTube channel also um, shares every video uh, from all the games that have taken place so far. Um, you know, it's searchable by player, it's searchable by team. So any game you haven't caught up on, uh, feel free to either go to the YouTube channel or download the app. Also, uh, like our Facebook page, uh, Global Poker League, and you'll also see shared there all the matches that have taken place. Um, you've also got on there the strategy segments that we've been filming with our guest pro uh, this week, uh, Mr. Jonathan Little of the Las Vegas Money Mix. Um, we are going to go to the second game. Where third game. Game three. Third game, sorry. The, the third of three. I am off form with these, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, these links. Well, it's hard to remember poker hands. They, go, they fly no, by quickly. Yeah. These players are playing the fast. Third game, guys. Third game. The fact that they're playing so fast makes it hard to remember all these hands. They're flying by so quick. So let's, let's, let's go to them. to the them. action. Maybe. <sighs> no. We'll wait a few seconds. There we go. <laughs> I think we are kind of in a way where we're supposed to be. I ran good in game one. All right, everything's on the line two. here. And one. <laughs> winner, winner takes first spot overhaul. So it's this third game that, you know. Like Andre feeling bullish about this one. No, he's not going to get swept. All right. So there's a board usually depending on the run out where I will go for it. Um. Yeah, definitely now. <laughs> So again, Olivier is betting here with the backdoor equity. Remember, we talked about backdoor equity. This is a card that gives him a lot more outs. So this is a hand he's choosing to barrel with. If he had something like 5-4 offsuit on the flop, maybe he does not. That is not the, the card that I was looking for, but... 
still think you got to bet out. Somebody's interested in the bet size here. Olivier likes to do this somewhat default two-thirds bet size or three-fourths bet size on the river. There are a number of draws that missed, but you, know, you just got to go for it, especially right. when your hand is it's bad. Right there, I'm tempted to bet small with my range, and maybe that's just a mistake. And I'd be betting small with my whole range so because that's good. That we're could trying to bad early hand. He's trying to get that's hands. That's a pretty good one. Well, and you know, in the here. dynamic, <laughs> when you're playing, you know, these types of games, um, being able to get away with a couple bluffs early is like always really good because it increases your opponent the way they perceive your overall aggression level. So now. And if you do make some decent hands, you're a little bit more likely to get paid off. It's not, you know, some people kind of overestimate these dynamics, and they're like, okay, now I'll, I'll just get paid off if I have anything. That, that, that's not true, but the probabilities are slightly more in your favor, I think. Especially against somebody very good, they're not going to kind of go overboard. Um, but those dynamics do exist even among pros. Safe river for Olivier to get value here. That was actually one of the questions I asked him in my the webinar I did with him about a week ago. And I asked, do you just play game theory optimal in your mind all the time, or are there are you adjusting versus other great players? I was like, oh, no, you adjust all the time. Like, everyone gets on tilt. I mean, him, he says, Olivier said that he gets on tilt, and he says that no, like, no one is a robot. Horrible card from because Mark Andre did bet the flop. So you always want to ask yourself, what is my opponent's strategy? And what is their betting range, etc. And that's the spot where if you think he's not betting very many ace highs on the flop, then this ace high is obviously not good for his range at all, and Mark Andre should realize that. Don't forget to uh, follow the GPL on Twitter, folks. That's at GPL, and use the hashtag GPL to uh, Join in the conversation with uh, myself and Jonathan Little and all our team here at the GPL. Looks like we have the game paused for a second to hopefully fix some of these technical is technical issues. We're hearing from the producer that we have to wait a few minutes because We've lost some internet here in Malta. Okay. Malta is an island in the middle of what body of water? I'm uh, the bad, I'm Mediter American. Mediterranean Sea, Jonathan. We're, we're in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. That's different from the Dead Sea. 
we don't float if you go out in the water, correct? Absolutely not. <laughs> okay, so I need to make sure I don't go. I mean, quite the opposite out. here in Malta. Malta's famed for its shipwrecks, so uh, yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, things things you know rarely float off the off the shores of Malta, uh, Malta especially uh, during the uh, Second World War, where uh, the uh, there was a lot of uh, naval activity and a lot of uh, sunken ships. Have you been to a sunken ship in the middle? I haven't yet. I mean, I, mean, I know they're popular, the, the uh, diving tours here in Malta. I mean, I know we're going on off, off a bit of a tangent from the uh, GPL, but yeah. Um, yeah, popular kind of activity is uh, shipwreck exploring off the uh, Maltese coast. I thought it would always be cool to do free diving, where you just try to go incredibly deep in the water. Like, yeah. you know, hold your breath for 10 minutes or something like that. My wife did not really want me to do that. I got to where I can hold my breath for about four minutes, which is you know, a pretty good amount of time. But I cannot, I'm not allowed to go very deep because my wife thinks I'll kill myself by accident, which would not be shocking because I've hurt myself many times doing things that I probably should not have been trying to do. Can we get a top three while we're waiting for this? Uh, oh, here we go. <sighs> we don't, we don't, we're not going to get the, uh, the um, Jonathan Little's uh, top three injuries, guys. We're uh, back in the, uh, the action. Uh, Olivier. Raising to uh, 1,500 on the bottom with Jack Nine. I'll only give one. I, I hurt my foot trying to run a five-minute mile. And that's, I mean, in, in school, I could run like an eight-minute mile, and I would be running as fast as I could. But I got to about a 515, and then I hurt my foot, and then the doctor said, you probably shouldn't be trying to. He has transcended beyond exactly poker. What's happening here? Olivier min raised. Mark Andre decides to three bet this hand. Wow. This is a hand a lot of people typically call with. I'm going to give Olivier rank number 78. That's an exceptionally good guess uh, from Jonathan Hill. Uh, the correct answer is 80. Wow. That is, that I is didn't spot cheat on. even. I would, have been, sure I, would have been, I would have been impressed if you, if you got to within 20 either side, to be honest. Well, I, I, I know he's more popular than I am, so he must be above that. And he hasn't, he's not like Daniel Negreanu, so he's not number yeah. one. And we actually went through the top 10. I knew he wasn't in the top 10. Not like Samantha Abernathy or someone like that, <laughs> who's way up there. Um, so Mark andre wow. I'm going to give him a lower ranking. We have the guys back on webcam, folks. Let's let's do 487. Is just going to be a give up. Not yeah, a great, another, a another pretty good guess. I mean, you're not within two. Damn. Three hundred sixty-three. Three sixty-three. Okay. I, I did not think you would have such a high ranking, mainly because he doesn't play a whole lot of live poker. He's more of an online player. But you know, clearly I'm wrong. Three hundred something's very good. I think it should be more popular. If people 
saw him and talked to him and hung out with him, they would know that he is the man. I hung out with him, hung out with him last time I was in Malta here a little bit. After the... Or was it in... Florida? It was in California. It was after the draft, actually. It was after okay, the Global yeah. Poker League draft in California. And he was nothing but a treat to hang out with. Both these guys were in Malta for the... Um GPL World Cup. Uh, Olivier was representing Team USA, and Marc Andre was uh, representing Canada. Why is this? Just gonna feel like getting up right now. I don't know why. Olivier saying he just feels like giving up. And Olivier's instincts here are spot on as ever. I mean, that's just sick. Whenever the guy may bluff um, with his draws, but just doesn't. You know. Let's hear why. Let's hear why. Sometimes you get a feeling about something and you're totally wrong. Sometimes you're right and you're just lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Just had a feeling there and decided to trust it instead of what would normally be a bet for me. So, you know, this. Well. It's a good yeah. spot for Olivier as the nuts again. <laughs> he will not complain about how he has ran in the Global Poker League. He turns the coconuts here. Wow, and Marc Andre is going for it. So now does Olivier Razor yes, just call? The issue here is just that I actually I don't know how likely Mark is to like fire off third barrel in the last game. My, my sense is that he's he's a little bit unbalanced um, and won't fire off as much. But maybe he has something. Maybe he will. I mean, I don't. I don't know. I'm just afraid to lose value by just checking by just check calling the turn. But maybe I'm wrong. My hand is so good, obviously, that I don't. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I think I'm happy. I don't lose any value by being afraid of any river cards. And he does bet. Sorry, that's really loud. Um. Olivia Busquets is in a hangar right. at JFK. Balcony door is open, that's why. Hopefully this will just be the game, you know? <laughs> Poor Mark Andre, Mark Andre. Nothing he's doing is working. Yeah. Oh, well. Have you, have you been around to Olivier Busquets' apartment? Is he, I don't... I, does, does he live under the, the flight path of, <laughs> of uh, one of the uh, airports out there? No. Clearly must. I mean, I live on the... 14th floor of an apartment that's not even on a busy street, and it's always loud with sirens going by and cars going by. That was the, that was the noise of a. That was the noise of an airplane. Though. Yeah, of a, you know, a four-engine, four-engine commercial plane. Probably like below 1,500 feet. You know your airplanes. Well, I mean, I used to work in an yeah. airport. Oh well. Would you believe that? Yeah, I'm quite quite partial uh, to a to a you know an article or two on the uh, right. <laughs> on the uh, aerospace industry. Take poker instead. How much equity did you lose in uh, like flight arrivals? Oh, a few thousand <laughs> before I quit. We may see the all in and call on this hand. Okay. And Mark Andre in the same spot he was on game one, where he's going to have to win a few of these short stacked all ins to get back in it. Nine for the sweat. Just a jack or a ten. Mark Andre will double up. Twenty big blinds. It's fun though. I'm, I'm kind of. I always root for the short stack when I have two world class. players playing. I, I love to, I mean, if they could just sit here and battle all day, I would just sit here. Like yeah, a kid in the candy store, happy as could be. This is the GPL, guys.
This is one of the first overbets of the match, if not the first. I think it's just because we haven't had very many spots that have occurred like this. Certainly putting Mark Andre in a miserable spot. This is a scenario where Olivier should have a lot of bluffs. So he wants to make sure he's value betting big with the value hands and you know, bluffing big with some of the bluffs. Not necessarily all of them, but some of them. And Mark Andre does make the fold. We may see well, the chips going in here. I don't know. Mark Andre may just defend this. I mean, he certainly could shove. I don't think shoving would be ridiculous. Okay. Ops to go for the shove. And he'll be at risk with King, seven of hearts. 40% chance. Okay, Ooh. there's the king. It's like Mark Andre will double up again. Running clubs or an ace needed for Busquet. <laughs> Just the ace now. All right. Look a bit like an ace there. Just the uh, four of spades. Harmless for Mark Andre. And he'll uh, double up to uh, 37,000. The double double up there for uh, Mark Andre. So this is what he failed to do in the first game when he got short. He doubled up one time, but could not get the second one. Now he's got the second one, but as we see, still behind in chips. But not nearly as much as he was a second ago. I'm interested to see if Mark bets this flop. This is a flop some people bet and some people do not. And sometimes they bet and sometimes they do not. Notice here Mark lacks all the backdoor draws that we were discussing earlier. I think a lot of people... They want to think about when they need to be playing big pots, but they don't think about these small pots and how to really attack these scenarios that come up very often, actually. And usually going for either a complete give up or a delayed continuation bet with your no hand, no draw, just no equity is a good play. But there, the ace came on the turn. That should be great for Marc-Andre, because think about this, right? He checks behind on the flop with a lot of ace highs. And when he checks behind with these ace highs, I really that ace should hit him. So I'm hoping to get credit now. It's interesting, Olivier going to three bet this hand, probably due to game flow dynamics, really. But you know, this guy's probably not going to give you credit. If there's any type of good hand, he knows that I'm going to be bluffing, no matter how often I've been three betting. Yeah. Now, well, buckle up. Um. It's going to work, most likely. I like seeing Olivier perk up over there because you know he's typing in a bet size. All right, that's a good result. I like watching him bet. I enjoy that. <laughs> and a good flop, let's be real. That's another form of luck that a lot of people don't really perceive. Like right there, the flop could have come queen 7-4, and Olivier would have gone, Olivier would have gone broke. Instead, it comes 5-4-3, and his opponent had not an ace. And he wins the pot. So, you know, that, that's an example of a spot where Olivia just goes broke, I don't know, some percentage of the time, like 10% of the time or 15% of the time. Maybe more, for all I know. And <laughs> Sarah Olivia lets go of a pretty good hand. A reminder, guys, if you've uh, experienced any uh, technical outages in this uh, game thus far, uh, that can be recaptured on the um, GPL TV app, which is available on iOS and Android. All highlights in there from every game played so far in the GPL. And there's been a lot of games. A lot of games. This is match number 124. I don't think people realize how much content that is. If each heads up game lasts, say, an hour and a half, well, that is 180 hours of content with the best players in the world giving yeah. their commentary and occasionally get some people who are good in the booth who can give good commentary as well. And I mean, if, if you're trying to learn poker or if you're just a fan of poker, Ooh, a, this is where you want to be. Chips probably be going in here. Huh? They will be, and Olivier is going to be. This guy, man, I think this is well, a jam to his three bet. I just, it's unfortunate because he's going to have like every hand that beats mine, but I just think he's bluffing a lot. Playing for it all. Olivier will need to get lucky here. Man, let's go. Even here, notice if Olivier loses, he still has 18,000 chips. So it's not like he's dead. Safe for Marc Andre. Give Each. us a jack. Give us a five. Jack a few chops nine. possible. Six or a f uh, five or a jack. There it is. Oof. What a stupid game. Big double up for uh, Marc Andre. <laughs> <laughs> Olivier is so annoyed. Don't be annoyed, friend. 
<laughs> Olivier doesn't lose heads up on the GPL very no, often. He really uh, doesn't want to lose this. He maybe feel like he maybe feels like he should not have paid there. I don't think anyone can fault him for shoving with the ace nine there. I think it's a pretty standard default play. Maybe Olivier thinks he could have gotten away from it, but Marc Andre is certainly capable of three betting many, many junky hands. And uh, yeah, the, I mean, I mean, the anguish is etched over Olivier Busquet's face here. If anyone was uh, in any doubt as to whether he uh, was uh, feeling um, kind of motivated to win this one. to win we're trying our absolute best all right here we go mark andre may limp this if he limps this he's gonna get off the hook but he does go for the shove. well good i mean i think that's just a sort of well it is a standard ish default shove a few possibilities for mark andre here to uh get lucky jack four will be needed on the river here double up for olivier back to uh just shy of 30k this game going one way and the other. Eight sixteen. Wow. Okay. So Olivier back to about eighteen big blinds. Still nowhere near out of the woods, but. So obviously the blinds get big. These games can just swing back and forth, and it feels silly because it doesn't take much to get all in. Mark Andre still in a commanding position here. Notice Marc Andre elected not to go all in with the ace 10. He elected to use a small raise. That will allow him to have some bluffs Especially in his range. When, uh, when your which is good. It's tough, like Mark. It's like the edges are so small. If Mark decided to either shove there or check, that takes away a lot of his bluffing opportunities because he has to risk so much to win the relatively small pot, which is why. With these 18 big blind sacks, you can't justify raising to about three and a half big blinds or two and a half big blinds. And you'll pick up the pot some portion of the time when your opponent has the bottom of their range. And even then, Olivia had queen three, which is not the bottom of his range at all. Mark Andre seems to like a raising strategy with the vast majority of his hands with his stack depth, which is, I think, a fine strategy. But if you do it too often, it'll open the door for your opponent to shove on you a bunch, and then you're going to blind off. Well, you're going to lose those two big blind raises a little bit more often than you would like. And the book I wrote with Olivier Bousquet, it's called Excelling at No Limit Hold'em. There's actually a section in that discussing limping versus min raising when shallow stacked heads up, something you definitely want to study if you are going to play heads up, ever. <laughs> Notice Olivier not shoving this king too, like need to just call and see a flop. So Mark checks behind with this queen high that could be good and a draw that he doesn't really want to bet and get pushed off of. This is a little bit different than when they're betting with hands that have backdoor draws because here this backdoor draw is quite weak Should and the queen high could be good you want to be betting whatever your backdoor draw we is value a bunch some medium to weak spade it's not going anywhere you want to be betting when your showdown value can turn into the nut or when your um backdoors can turn into the nuts not when your backdoor draws or your marginal draws turn into bad made hands because you don't want to be playing big pots with bad made hands so you want to be betting with hands that could potentially turn into premium hands Interesting you mentioned your book, Jonathan. I just want to ask you about the sort of the whole 
um, concept of poker books and how that's evolved over the years. I remember when I got into poker, kind of many years ago, so sort of first showed an interest. There was literally only sort of three or four books that were kind of the, the Bibles. There was like Harrington on Hold'em, there was Super Systems, you know, there was Caro's Book of Tells. Um, and now, I mean, there just seems to be books, so many books. Uh, the first question is, is, has that kind of diluted the, the kind of, the, you know, what's out there? Is, is it kind of, it, it feels like for a lot of casual players, it's hard to know which books, you know, Ones, you know, which ones should pick up, which ones add value to a to a kind of an aspiring player, um, and also are they are they less profitable? Do you think they were back in the uh, back in the day? Well, I don't make much money for my books, so <laughs> I, I can I can definitely vouch for that. I, I do it because I love it. And I love helping people who want to learn. Off over betting or just betting six thousand there. But um, you, you, you want to make sure you're studying from people who know the game they are discussing. Don't learn from just random people who write a book. Okay, my next question would be. If a sort of, okay, I'll wait till Olivier's finished talking here. Full heart. Or Marc Andre. One well, more. Can Olivier hold the best hand again? Oh, why oh. don't we chop it up? Gosh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's not hoping to chop that pot. Okay, next question. Oh, yeah. So if an aspiring poker player was to sort of shop around for a book, and was to see, you know, this, the array of titles that there are nowadays. How would a player know um, which of those books are, are sort of authored by, um, you know, the best yeah, players so for what they want to do? Do you think? Do you think you should check someone tender mob, or do you think they should check yeah. their online earnings? Or both. Yep. I mean, definitely check their hand and mob. Check their earnings. Here we have an all-in though. Olivier is Ooh. going to be out, unless they put a six on the turn. Good well, game, that's not a six. Well played. A win. See you later, guys. Good game, both players. Well played. Well, stay on top. Still on top. <laughs> well, there you go, folks. The unstoppable Olivier Bousquet has been stopped in his tracks by a uh, French dog, the team manager of um, the Montreal Nationals. Um, he's defeated uh, Olivier Bousquet 2-1, um, and uh, Olivier didn't look particularly thrilled there. Well, no, he doesn't like to lose. He likes winning in heads-up games in particular. And, I mean, really, I was just happy to watch that game. It was a lot of fun to hear both the players sharing their knowledge, and I thought it was a great match. And, you know, they both come out with a few points, so neither team is too incredibly disappointed about that because they're both going to stay at the top of the division without much risk of getting dethroned. So, um Really, just a fine result for both teams. Yeah, I said at the, the top of the show that mo these guys might be feeling pretty relaxed about this one. Um, but as um, Olivier went short on chips um, after losing a big pot in that final game, his face did sort of turn to thunder. So uh, I think I'd probably stand corrected there to suggest that they were both kind of slightly um, ambivalent, you know, regarding the um, outcome of that game. So yeah, Olivier clearly doesn't like to lose. Probably why he's kind of, you know, such a, a master at his craft. Um, that was, that's all for that game, guys. Uh, the Montreal Nationals will um, cement their league at the top of the uh, Americas Conference. Um, probably going to look forward to the next two games we have now. Um, some really kind of Interesting games coming up. Um, first, first up, well, after the break, we've got the um, New York Rounders against the Sao Paulo Metropolitans. And finally, we've got um, Jonathan Jaffe uh, for the San Francisco Rush against um, the Las Vegas Moneymakers and um, Jake Cody, Jonathan's team. Um, but for now, we're going to uh, leave you um, from the desk and head over to Laura Cornelius in the lounge. Off we go to Laura. Thank you so much, Roland and Jonathan Little there commentating on that first heads up game from the Americas Conference this evening. Congratulations to the Montreal Nationals and Marc Andre Ladusa, who indeed takes six points and makes sure they stay firmly at the top of the American standings. Hopefully, we have Marc Andre on the line to have a quick chat with him. Congrats, Marc Andre. You played um, Olivier before, it didn't go your way. This time it's gone your way. You must be feeling good about that. Yeah, hey, Laura. Um, yeah, Olivier is one of the toughest opponents we, uh, we can face in the league. So um, there was a lot at stake and really happy we were able to, to maintain our number one spot. If you can think back to when you played him before, it was quite a few months ago. Um, did he play in the same sort of style? Were you expecting him to play or did he throw anything new into the mix? Um, I assume he played in a similar way. To be honest, I haven't seen all the, uh, uh, all the replays yet, but um, I uh, was pretty fortunate second and third match. Uh, some good
good run outs for me and in and, and particularly in that big three bet pot and then uh, a couple all-ins went my way and just uh, just happy we got the, this one out of the way and uh, put six points on the board. You would have been feeling pretty bad if he'd have taken the clean sweep because it would have meant that LA Sunset would have gone to first place in the standings. They would have overtaken you. But now you are still firmly at the top of the standings right now. So that must be a good achievement for you as well. Yeah, that would have been awful to, to be the one that gets uh, passed in points there. But uh, got a, another four weeks to look forward to. Going to try to maintain that number one spot. All right. Well, thanks so much for chatting with us and congratulations again on those six points for the Montreal Nationals staying at the top of the American standings. Have a night. Have a good night. All right. Or a good day even. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> thanks. Marc-Andre.